In today's video, it's going to be a beginner guide to flight controllers, from all-in-one flight controllers to normal flight controls. And what we're going to cover today is we're going to cover how to power the flight controller and what to look for so you don't burn it, how to power the VTX and connect it properly, how to connect the camera, receiver. Also, why you kind of want to avoid PDBs, it's not a really bad thing, but nowadays it just makes things more complicated for most. And also the difference between an F4 and F7 and why that is important when you're going to connect your receiver. And we'll also cover some of the terminology. All right, so let's get started here. Now, the first thing to look for before purchasing or if you've already purchased a flight controller is the input voltage. This is very important because you can fry your flight controller. And what do I mean by that? Some flight controllers only take five volts. And if they do that, then you're going to have to supply five volts. You cannot give it battery power. And if you give it battery power then or battery voltage, then you'll immediately burn it. For example, this one right here. This is an Matek F722 STD. It doesn't have a 5 volt regulator and it only takes 5 volts. And this is very important, which we'll cover in a bit. So this you will immediately burn if you connect battery voltage to. However, if we take a look at this flight controller here, which is the Mamba F722, if you take a look at the spec sheet, and I'll have these linked down below. If you take a look at the spec sheet, it'll say it'll take up to 6S voltage. So that means it'll take a 4S battery to a 6S battery. And if you don't know what that means, you'll eventually get to know it and I'll probably make a separate video on that. But this will take battery voltage, which you should be totally fine and you're not going to burn anything on it, which is really great. Now, this covered just normal flight controls. We also have something called all-in-one flight controllers. And what is an all-in-one flight controller? Well, all-in-one flight controllers such as this one here or this one right here will have everything connected to them. The ESCs, the battery, everything because this is a power distribution board and a flight controller all into one board and that's why they call them all in one flight controllers and we'll cover how to connect these up in a bit so understanding your input voltage is very important now for example how would you give this one the battery voltage well what's really great about some of these especially this brand right here this is the diatone mamba f722 they also have an f405 which is a really great budget option and it does come with a 4-in-1 ESC, which means all the ESCs come into one board. Now, for powering the flight controller that comes with it, it's very simple. Place in the connector, and now this gets power from the ESC because the battery would be connected right here, or the, you know, the XT30 where the battery plugs in. Now, ESC connection will cover again in a later step. I don't want to make this too complicated. But now this board will have power, and you don't need to worry about powering it because everything is done, and it's even less soldering to do because it connects everything. It connects all your ESC completely together with the flight controller, and now you have less things to worry about. And that's why these stacking options are really great and they're really well priced now. They used to be really expensive, but recently have dropped down in price dramatically. Now, the next thing we're gonna cover is the camera. Now, the camera is very important. It also has some sort of a voltage input, which you need to take into consideration. But most of the cameras, maybe like 98% of the cameras out there will take five volts and I highly recommend just powering it off of the five volt rail. Most of these have a five volt regulator and they have a special place for the camera. And let me show you by example here. So we're gonna start off with this example right here. Now again, this is the Mamba F722. It's slightly more expensive, but it has Bluetooth connectivity so you can program your quad via your phone through an application, which is really great and very useful at times. Now, what you wanna do is when we're installing a camera, we need to look for is a pad either called cam, VI, possibly just a C, but it's rarely ever that. It's either cam or VI or video. Now, VI stands for video input because VO would be video output, which we'll cover in a bit. So on this board, we have, it's called cam. So as we can tell, we would connect cam right here, ground and five volt. Now, most of the cameras come with, some come with more wires than others, but usually you have your three basic ones, which are the red, black, and yellow. And these are very important. Red will always mean the positive voltage. So this would be five volt. This will go to a five volt pad. The black one is going to be the ground, which would go on the ground. And the yellow one would be your camera or video input or VI, whatever it's called. This is where the video signal is. And if we take a look here, we can count from the left. We see that the first two are buzzers. So buzzer plus buzzer minus, which we'll cover later. 5 volt, the red wire would go from the camera, then ground, the black wire of the camera, and then the cam would be the yellow wire. Now you might be like, well, why can't we connect the video transmitter and the camera together? You can, but 
the reason why people don't do that is because we have this little chip right here that gives us very valuable information on the screen. They call it OSD, which is an on-screen display. It gives you the battery voltage if you're running out of signal. It gives you all kinds of good information that you need, how long you've been flying. And this is why we route the camera and the VTX through the flight controller. So it can pass through that on-screen display chip to give us all that information when it comes down to our goggles. Now let's take another example here. So we have this board here, it's Flywoo. And again, everything here is linked down below. If we wanted to connect the camera, it would be up here. And how did I find out? Well, it's pretty simple. We have ground and we have a five volt and we have a VI this time. It's a video input, VI. So as you can tell, that's what they usually use, VI, cam, and sometimes they write video. But that can be kind of confusing, especially for the VTX. And usually when they write video, they would write VTX for the VTX wire, which we'll get into the VTX in a bit. But usually it's VI and cam. So here is our VI. That's where we'd put the yellow wire again. And then next we have the five volt, which would be our red wire. And then we have ground, which would be the black wire. And we have a camera connected on this board. And this goes for every single flight controller on the market. So for example, this flight controller is a little bit more complicated to find the VI. Because here we see a VO, and then next to it we see a T1. and a B. So the VO would be video output. That's going to be the VTX, so don't put it on the VO. But if we take a closer look at the pads here, we see ground, 5 volt, and VI. So that's a video input right here. So the yellow wire again would go to the VI, the red wire would go to the 5 volt, and the black wire would go to the ground. Usually any black wire would go to the G, which is the ground. It's very important you do that while you fry your camera or the board. So all cameras come with the three standard colors, yellow, black, and red. And sometimes they add little extra wires, but those are gonna be for extra peripherals that allow you to change the settings of the camera. But all you need to concentrate on are the red, black, and yellow wires. So that covers it for the camera. It's really that simple. Next, let's cover the VTX, which is the video transmitter. Now it's very important to know this word or these terminologies. It'll really help you out in the future. So now we're gonna take a look at the VTX. Now the VTX sometimes comes with a bunch of wires and colors as you can tell right here and something called smart audio and it even says five volt cam and ground. So sometimes you have these extra features that might lose a lot of new people, but all you need to look at are three to four things. And what are those? The input voltage, the ground, well at least one ground, and the video, and the smart audio, if it does have smart audio, which we'll cover in a bit, but right now you can just ignore it. You'll, you'll survive without smart audio. Smart audio just basically allows you to control the channel and the broadcasting power of this through your on-screen display, which is a more advanced tutorial, and we'll cover that later on. But right now, I'll show you how to connect the smart audio, but you would still need to configure it in the beta flight. For VTX, we see it'll take 7 to 26 volts. That means we cannot use a 5 volt pad to power this guy, or it won't boot. So keep that in mind. Ground, black wire. You always have to connect all the grounds together. So that'll go to any ground pad, doesn't matter. Video, this is where the video output would be, or something called VTX pad. So if we come back to the Mamba here, all right, so for the Mamba, they've actually done something non-standard here. So we already found cam, as you can tell here, and now they have set vid right there. And vid obviously is, there's nothing else that could be vid other than the VTX. So what you'd wanna do is you would get the yellow wire, usually it is the yellow wire on most of these, but always double check so we can see the wire ordering on the VTX here, and they usually tell you on every VTX. So we're gonna take the yellow wire from the VTX and we're gonna set it up on the vid here. But now, how do you power this guy? So there's two ways to power him. One is to find a VCC pad, and they're always called VCC. And that means battery voltage, because most of the VTX takes battery voltage. When you see seven to 26 volts, that means battery voltage, and you'll find a VCC pad, but you won't always find a VCC pad. So if we're lucky on this one, we find the VCC in ground. So we would take the red wire from the VTX, we'd put it on VCC, and the black wire would put it on the ground. And we already talked about the yellow wire, which would go to vid on this flight controller. Now, there is smart audio. Smart audio, you'd always want to put it on a TX number pad. So here they've already prepared for us a TX3 next to the vid. Not always they do that, but this is really nice. So we'd be able to put that smart audio wire on the TX3 here. And I'll explain what the TX and RX pads mean in a bit. So here we just set it up on TX3. So now this is all done. So what do we do with the 5 volt and ground left on the VTX? Now again, not all VTXs have that. 
But what I recommend you do is you ignore that. You could just remove the wires, cut them up, and you don't need to use them. And uh, you're good to go. That's what a lot of people do. That's what I do. So don't let them fool you. The extra ground and the 5 volt, just ignore these. Don't put a 5 volt to a 5 volt here. You'll burn something. So keep that in mind. So we just covered how to connect a VTX on this flight controller. Now let's try out another flight controller. So here we have a Kakute all-in-one flight controller here. And this one is also kind of not being standard in the way to find what pad to power the VTX on. Like I told you, VCC. However, what they've done here is they've given you a B plus pad. Now, how did I know this? You have to be careful because sometimes B plus and B minus means the buzzer. So if you wanted to add a buzzer, but usually sometimes again, it's BZ for buzzer. So here we have a B plus, we have a ground and we have the VO. So the ground would be the black wire, any of the grounds on the... Uh, VTX if you have to it doesn't matter and then the 7 to 26 volts is going to be battery voltage Which is the B plus here now if you are not sure that this is battery voltage What you can do is bring your red wire instead of connecting it here You can connect it to one of these big pads that says plus on it And that would give it battery voltage and the ground you could connect it to any ground on the board doesn't matter But you can go for this one and you'll find VO where the yellow wire would go now Why VO why do they call it video output? Well because the camera would go in to the VI the video input go through this little chip right here Put all the information on the display or on the screen or on the image and then display it on the video out to the VTX and this VTX will broadcast everything down to your goggles and that's basically covered. Now if you wanted to connect smart audio just find any TX pad and you're set to go but make sure the RX number of it is not being used which again we'll cover in a bit. RX and TX just consider them as USB ports. You'll find an RX1 and a TX1 that means USB1. You'll find an RX2 and a TX2 that means USB2. That's how you just think, think of it that way. It'll make your life a lot easier. So there are some other flight controllers that have something pretty unique, which is an extra voltage regulator that is above 5 volts, whether it be 9 volts and 12 volts. This one right here has a voltage regulator of 9 volts, and that is a really nice feature to have because it reduces problems in your video feed. Sometimes you get these nasty lines and you need to add a capacitor. However, some flight controllers incorporate a voltage regulator to reduce those chances, such as this one right here. Now, if we take a closer look on the top right here, what we find is we find ground, 9 volt, video output, and T4. Remember the TX4? That's right there for smart audio. So they've even prepared that for you here. So you can use smart audio. So and again, ground is black wire. The 9 volt would be the red wire because if you take a look at the VTX, all usually most of them will say 7 to 26 volts. So that's 9 volts right there. So that's going to be beautiful. It's going to give you a beautiful video feed. VO, obviously the yellow wire because the video output and then T4 would be the smart audio. Now, what happens if you don't have a 9 volt and if you don't have a VCC pad or a B plus pad, what do you do? Well, you, what you'd have to do is find the part where the XT30 is connected, where the battery is actually going right into the quadcopter. It'd probably more than likely be a 4 in 1 ESC and go to that plus sign on the ESC and just Bring your red wire from the VTX and solder it right there. Don't solder it on your motor outputs. On the plus where the battery is coming. And that would give it uh, the battery voltage and the ground can go anywhere. And that basically covers it for the VTX. Now the next thing we're going to cover is the receiver. Now the receiver is very, very, very important. And there's two main receivers on the market. It's the FR Sky receivers and the Fly Sky receivers, and this plays a big role. So they have different requirements. Now we'll start with FR Sky, what they call S bus. Most of your receivers will come with three main outputs: a red wire, a black wire, and another colored wire, which would be the signal. And this is very important, whether it be S bus for FR Sky or iBus for FlySky. Now the first thing you need to take a look at is your flight controller, whether it's something called an F4 or an F7. And the way you find that is you'll find these, the biggest chip usually will say STM32 and then F and then the number, either F4 or F7, and then it'll continue by a bunch of numbers. We'll start with the easy one. If your flight controller is an F7, then you are able to connect the signal to any RX pad or R pad. Very important. Why R pad? Now remember when I said the TX and the RX are like USB ports? So here we have TX2 and RX2. Consider this as USB port 2. 
Now, what does the T stand for? The T stands for transmit data. So it sends data out. And the R stands for receive. So it receives the data. However, for example, if we set the VTX on TX2 for the smart audio, then we're not going to be able to use the RX2 for the receiver because the receiver needs to be put on R. So this USB port has been used up and you cannot use it again. So we probably look down here, oh look, we have another TX4 and RX4, but you can set it up to RX4 here. Now what's really nice about F7s is both FlySky and FRSky can go to any RX pad that's available. Here we have the RX4, so I would connect my other colored wire to the R pad. And then the red and the black would go to a 5 volt and ground, any 5 volt and ground that are available. And this goes for any other F7 flight controller. However, when we talk about F4 flight controllers, it's a different story. On F4 flight controllers, there is a special pad called SBUS or RC, and that is only specifically made for an FR Sky SBUS receiver. For example, here we have an F4 microcontroller unit or an F4 flight controller and we can see it has the S bus right here. So we would grab our white wire or you know like whatever the other it could be yellow it could be any other color. That's why I'm saying that whatever is not red or black. Uh, you would connect it right there to the S bus and that would be connected. However, if you got a fly sky now and put it on the S bus it will not work. So for a FlySky receiver, this S bus pad will not work for the signal. You would have to go to an RX pad. So I'd probably, I would go ahead and connect it to the RX2 right here, and then my I bus would work. Obviously, you got to give it the 5 volt and ground. If you ever see this pad, 4V5, what that means is if you plug in the USB, it'll actually power the receiver. Not all flight controllers do that. It makes binding easier and safer. And we'll cover binding again in a later video. Now, there's something called gyros also, which are very important to how your quad might behave, especially if you're new. There's two types of gyros. There's the MPU, there's actually many types, but the ones to look for, I'll make it as simple as possible. MPU 6000 gyro, MPU, remember the MPU? And then there's something called ICM, whether it's 2068, there's a bunch of them. So the MPU is less sensitive, and the ICM is very sensitive. And Obviously, being a beginner, you're not going to have the best build ever, and it's highly recommended you stick to an MPU-based uh, gyro flight controller. Now, don't let this affect your choice to the fullest extent. They'll both work just fine, but preferably, if you go for an MPU 6000 gyro, it'll be much easier to get in the air without any vibrations and anything of that nature because it's less sensitive, and there is lately there is no need for the ICM gyro, so it is going to possibly start getting removed off of these flight controllers, but we don't know. All right, so this is going to conclude it for this video, and I really hope it helped someone out there. Let me know what you guys want to see down in the comment section. Also, I do have a Patreon. If this does help you, please consider joining my Patreon. I also have some of my tested budget components linked down below, which I highly recommend for you to use, especially when you're starting out, and even professionals use themselves, such as myself. And, well, that's it, guys. So check the links down below. Go ahead and join my Patreon, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.